I read the New York Times It's where I get my news Paul Krugman's on the op-ed page That's where I get the blues Cause Paul always tells it like it is We get it blow by blow That's just privatization and belief in magic This is gonna be a catastrophe Krugman's got the Nobel Prize So Krugman ought to know In the field of economics there's no one quite like Paul Krugman. What he has done is a major contribution to America and to the world. The people I talk to at the White House tend Krugman to Krugman is one of the world's leading economists, but also one of its most influential public intellectuals. And that's made him something of a celebrity to boot. Oh boy. Are you Paul Krugman? Uh, yeah. My dad loves your shit. Oh, thank you. Please welcome my first Nobel laureate of the evening, Paul Krugman. Paul, good to see you again. He does this translation from the technical high church of economic thinking to things that common sense people can understand. I've invented a character because mm -hmm. plays a, uh, she plays a big role in a lot of these discussions. Mm -hmm. I call her the confidence fairy. Uh, if you look at what the right wingers are always saying, that you know they you, they're going to lay off school teachers, they're going to slash jobs, they're going to not build bridges, they're going to let the bridges we already have fall down. But that's okay because the confidence fairy will come in and make the make the economy grow. Not going to happen. And in fact, look, Paul. We, yes, <laughs> there might be children watching right now. Right. <laughs> Well, Confidence Fairy is real, isn't it? Uh, right, yes. He okay. is just on point every single time as to what we need to do to get out of this recession and that the focus now should be public investment. Paul Krugman is as close to an indispensable man as we have right now. I think it's a combination of having the, the academic skills, the credibility, and the fire in the belly. You know, it's like the left brain and the right brain are both working. Krugman is the first to acknowledge that his wife and frequent co-author Robin Wells deserves credit as well, both for his success and for help in articulating his vision of what America could be. Almost 10 years ago, I wrote a big piece for the Times Magazine about inequality. And it was Robin who suggested that it be grounded in you know, what America was like, at least the good parts of it when, when I was growing up. It was middle-class society. It wasn't perfect. There was, there were, obviously there were lots of things we, we don't want back, like racism and, and sexism, but, but there was a sense that working people, uh, pretty much whatever their work, had a pretty good chance of having a good life. And that's, I want a decent society, a society like that. I don't want the kind of society we're turning into, which is one where one misstep, one piece of bad luck, among other things, the bad luck of having the wrong parents, uh, means that, that you plunge into the abyss. That's not, that doesn't have to be true in, in the 21st century. Long before his present stardom, Paul Krugman served in the White House under no other than Ronald Reagan. He won the John Bates Clark Medal for the most talented economist under 40, and he made contributions to the theory of international trade and economic geography that would later win him a Nobel Prize. But outside of academia, few people knew his name. That all changed when he began writing his column for the New York Times in the run-up to the 2000 election. Something new was developing in American politics. I mean, all through that election campaign, George W. Bush was just lying, just flat out saying things that weren't true, that were demonstrably not true, and paid no price for it largely because no one would say it. No one in, in major media would, would, would say it. That, uh, that was when I formulated my doctrine, which is if Bush said that the Earth was flat, the headlines would read, views differ on shape of planet. And that was radicalizing. If you were paying attention during that election, it was a very radicalizing thing. Krugman became America's most outspoken critic of the Bush administration, exposing the fuzzy math behind tax cuts for the rich, questioning the pretext for the Iraq war, and demolishing the administration's arguments for privatizing Social Security. Paul is about making this world economy work a lot better. And if you got to name names to do so, Paul's not afraid to do it. It takes a certain kind of bravery to, to blow the whistle. And Paul has that kind of bravery. And I think we're all thankful that he has blown the whistle on so many issues. Obama is wrong, the loyal opposition of Paul Krugman. Now, in the Obama years, 
he's still our nation's preeminent truth teller. The big thing I've taken actually after after doing this for 11 years in the column uh, is there are no endings. You've never finally won, you've never finally lost. And a lot of people um, looked at you know, 2004 election and sort of said, oh, we're, it's, it's all gone. Um, and then within two years, everything had changed. And then after the 2008 election, it was, well, you know, our happy days are here again. And well, that wasn't true either. So it's always, you just keep on plugging. The job is not to make America the place you want it to be. The job is to work on making America the place you want it to be and do your bit. And if, if there are setbacks and if it's, and if it's not done in, in my lifetime or Robin's lifetime, that's, that's okay. That's the way it is. You, you just work on it. You bring me down, but way to go, Paul. On the occasion of its 25th anniversary, the Economic Policy Institute is proud to present the first ever Distinguished Economist Award to Paul Krugman.